The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Do you hear that, Jet fans? Do you hear that? That's Joe Douglas music. The Jets just acquired an all-pro pass rusher. Let's talk about it. I'm live from the Houston airport. Let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go, Jet fans. I'm live from the Houston airport. Today's my last day after almost six years in Houston. And, of course, as I'm on my way to the airport, Joe Douglas makes a huge, huge trade. The Jets have acquired all-pro edge rusher Hassan Reddick from the Eagles. There is your Bryce Huff replacement. We're going to talk about all that. Take your calls. I got about an hour until I board my flight back to New York. Because, as you all know, if you've been listening to the show, I am moving back to New York permanently after doing radio down here in Houston for almost six years. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and, of course, we'll take your calls, as I mentioned, on the Gus Buster Hotline coming up. Before we do any of that, I want to mention that today's show is presented by my friends at Roan Apparel. I'm rocking the Roan hat right now. Upgrade your closet, R-H-O-N-E dot com, and get yourself a button-down shirt. A polo shirt, pants, quarter zips, you name it, Roan has it. Once again, Roan.com, promo code ASMIN at checkout, so you can get yourself 20% off. And I'm telling you, you will not regret it. They have some of the finest clothing you're going to find. All right, now that I've said that, let's talk about this move. And I, I, I sit here and I struggle to find anything I dislike about this move from this specific standpoint. Hassan Reddick was the best they could have done out of any of the options left. This guy is better than Jadavian Clowney. This guy is better than Shaq Barrett. This guy is better than Yannick Ngakwe or whoever you're going to throw out there. I mentioned Reddick the other day when we talked about Clowney signing with the Panthers, but I wasn't sure what it was going to take to get him. When you see the details of the trade and you realize that Joe Douglas was able to acquire this guy for a conditional 2026 third round pick, I don't think this deal becomes a home run. The pick becomes a second rounder if Reddick plays 67.5% of the playing time or he has 10 sacks. If not, it stays a 2026 third round pick. But even if, let's say hypothetically, it becomes a second round pick in 2026, am I supposed to care? Seriously, as a Jet fan, am I supposed to care about a pick that this GM is probably not even going to be able to make if they don't win this year? This is the type of all-in moves you want from a general manager who is on the hot seat. You want from a franchise that has missed the playoffs for 13 straight seasons. Hassan Reddick is a damn good player. He's had 10-plus sacks four straight years. He was an all-pro two seasons ago, a pro bowler this past year. He went from 16 sacks two years ago to 11. Eagles couldn't afford to pay everyone. Jets can bring in a guy who even if they extend, we're probably talking about a two-year extension. You front load the money. It fits the all-in window that the Jets are in right now. So look, we could argue, was it a mistake to let Bryce Huff walk? And I certainly wanted him back. But when it comes to evaluating defensive players, I'm going to give the Jets the benefit of the doubt. They have earned that. Despite what many of you complain about, you can't complain about this defensive coaching staff or this front office's ability to bring in edge talent to help that defensive coaching staff. You can't complain about it. Look what they've been able to do the last couple of years. Finding guys you've never heard of and turning them into Pro Bowl-level players. Bryce Huff being the most recent example. 
they bring in guys and they have success in the system. If they think Hassan Reddick is going to be an upgrade over Huff or fits their timeline better, they've earned the benefit of the doubt. And once again, it's a pick that we're talking about in three drafts from now. Joe Douglas made a good deal here, folks. All right? You front load the contract. It's an all-in type of move. This is the type of move you make when you're chasing a Super Bowl this year. So I I love the details of the deal. I I didn't think they'd be able to get this level of a pass rusher for a third-round pick in 2026. Think about it. Say it out loud. Third-round pick in 2026. Maybe it's a second-round pick in 2026. It probably will be if Reddick still goes out there and has 10 sacks, which if he's healthy, you would expect him to be able to do that. I'll worry about that then. I want to win. You're willing to give up draft capital for premium positions. Hassan Reddick's one of those guys. And this now ends the nonsense about the Jets going edge with the 10th overall pick in the draft again. That's not happening. Joe Douglas was cooking with this one. I mean, you think about the front line now for the Jets. I mean, come on now. Think about the Jets front of Quinnen Williams up the middle, Jermaine Johnson, and Hassan Reddick rushing the quarterback. This team will play with more leads this year. This team will play in front instead of behind. There'll be more pass rushing opportunities for this team. This guy is a true pass rusher, and he's better against the run than Bryce Huff. That's the other thing in this move. Pressures last year, Reddick had 68, Huff had 67. Run stops last year, Reddick 24, Huff 16. Pro football focus is not the end-all, be-all, but the PFF run defensive grade for Reddick was 63.7, Huff 48. So the Jets might extend him, but it's not going to be what Bryce Huff got. And it's probably only going to be a two-year commitment. I have no problem with it. I think Joe Douglas did well here. And now you look at what this offseason has brought you. You got three bona fide offensive line starters. You have a legitimate number two wide receiver in Mike Williams. You have the best possible backup quarterback you could have imagined in case Aaron Rodgers can't play 17 games next year. You have retooled your defensive line with Javon Kinlaw, who I'll give this front office the benefit of the doubt. This coaching staff the benefit of the doubt. I mean, they they, they turned Quentin Jefferson into a six and a half sack season. And now we're placing with Kinlaw, who was a former first round pick with ta- talent. They replaced Bryce Huff with an all-pro edge rusher. I mean, what's not to like? You can complain about the Jets for a lot of things, and believe me, if you watch this show, we complain a lot, and it's justified. As far as this offseason, though, there's really not much to complain about. They've done what they needed to do. Now, the draft debate's going to be intense. It's going to pick up, and I fully recognize that. But as far as what this general manager needed to do this offseason, I don't know how we could sit here right now and not feel like, the Jets have absolutely closed the gap between them and the other teams in the AFC East. They won seven games a year ago with a historically bad quarterback situation. The three quarterbacks that started 17 games for the Jets last year, there's a good chance none of them are on NFL rosters week one of 2024. Zach Wilson might be a third string quarterback somewhere. He won't be active on game days. He could be on a practice squad. That's not an active roster. This team won seven games a year ago. You don't think the Jets, with Rodgers back and Tyrod backing them up, and this defense, which even with losing Huff, now replacing him with Reddick for at least one year, should be just as good. You haven't paid attention. So people can fire off their jokes and say their BS about the Jets all they want. The bottom line is, this defense is top five. The special teams is top five. This offense went from 32nd in the league to by accident you think would be average this year. And I think it could be much better than that. But this is the type of move you make when you're all in. And the Jets are all in. And when you think about this defensive line, it is absolutely stacked. So I am pumped up with this move. And I think if you're a Jet fan, you should be too. Comments, questions, Super Chats will cut the line. We are live from the Houston airport right now. In fact, there's a Buffalo Wild Wings right over there. Maybe I should ask for some sauce sauce to slurp down on the air to celebrate the uh, big trade that the New York Jets have made. People are looking at me like I'm crazy right now, too. But here's the thing. I don't really care because the Jets have a Son Reddick, baby. Yeah. 
And uh, here's the other reason why I don't really care, because I'm a master of these airport shows. All right. I've done about five or six of these in my YouTube career. So believe me. All right. Look at this mini studio I built right here, Jet fans. That's how much I love you all. Please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Become an as maniac. If you gift a membership to someone, we'll shout you out. Let's celebrate the move of the Jets landing Hassan Reddick for a 2026 conditional third round pick. Tremendous. All right. Let's see. We got some super chats here. We got people on the line as well. Coach James starts us off. Jake, let's go. I'm fired up. Coach Sal, it's on you now. Let's stay healthy. Look, health is the key for every team. It's the biggest key for any team in the league, though, when it comes to the Jets. But what are the Jets supposed to do? Right? For, for everyone who says, well, they got to stay healthy. Yeah, no bleep. All right? So does every team. You think, you think the Chiefs would win the Super Bowl? Patrick Mahomes got hurt in the fourth play of the year? Yeah, I didn't think so. So, obviously, the Jets need to stay healthy. But you know what? You can't say they haven't done what they what needed to be done. All right? This GM had a lot to accomplish this offseason. To this point, he has. Coach James is making it rain, folks. Wow, we got 10 memberships being gifted. Oh, baby, here we go. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey, oh. Love it. Absolutely love it, Coach James. And, and look, when you look at this defensive line now, I mean, I'm just I'm giddy thinking about uh, the possibilities. I really am. The following people just received a membership courtesy of Coach James Rodriguez. Kyle Clifton, congratulations. Additionally, a membership. Hold on. All the names are flying away from me here. Uh, Gubinder Sai, um, Michael Villavicino, MJ Dunn, Jeremy, Joe Samuels, Raphael, Wizenbig, and NYJYK Keith. Congratulations. Shout out to Coach James. All right. Let's get to some calls. I promised this guy he'd be first up because he was on hold. And I said, hey, can you hear me? I got to make sure the airport Wi-Fi is working okay. NY Jets Florida, start us off. What's up, man? What's up, man? Jake, good afternoon. Congratulations on finally leaving Houston. And uh, it's probably a little bit, maybe bittersweet for you. I'm sure you're happy to go back to New York. But uh, one thing I can say about this move is Hassan Reddick is Knoble. Okay, that's the first thing. <laughs> uh, Lane Train had it right. So, you know, that's the first thing. I think it's a great move. I mean, how could, like you said, how can you knock it? At least we get Brock Bowers off our, our mouth for, for one show. And um, we're all in, and let's see where we go with the draft. But I, like you said, Jake, there's, there's, there's no complaining about that kind of move. It's a perfect move. It, it's a, he's only 29. He is a Jersey guy. Very productive. And, you know, Huff is younger, but it's an excellent replacement, I feel. 100%, 100%. And when you think about it, if you were not going to keep Huff, what could you have done to replace his level of production? This was the only move you could make. And we didn't think Reddick would be realistic because, I mean, why would the Eagles trade a guy that has been that dominant? Well, they want to pay Devontae Smith. I texted someone that covers the Eagles. You know, he's 30 years old, Reddick. So it's like, what are they going to do? Jets are more all-in than the Eagles are right now, given the Jets' age at quarterback. So, look, I, I, I would have loved to have kept Bryce off. I'm on the record saying that. The one thing I will say, though, is when it comes to defensive players, you have to trust this front office and coaching staff. They have proven they know what they're doing there. If this was an offensive player, it would be different. All right, I like Bryce off, but they clearly don't think of him as an every-down player, and they clearly think that some of his sacks and production is a product of the fact. Look at the defensive line he plays on. He never has to deal with a double team because of Quinn and Williams. He's got an all pro, the best corner in the league in Sauce Gardner, probably a top 10 corner playing next to Sauce and DJ Reed. And Raddick is a true sack artist. He's a better pass rusher than Huff is. Better all around player, too. Maybe Huff with more playing time could get to that level, and the Eagles are banking on that, and I get it. But for an all in move, I love it. I love it. Allen writes in can't wait for security to haul Jake away. You know what? I can't wait, Allen. I can't wait to send you to Stupid Town. Just shut the f up. I did not ask for the dumb opinion that came out of your ass. So shut the f up. We'll see you later, Alan. All right, here we go. Jesse has just gifted 10 memberships, baby. Shout out to you, Jesse. That's awesome. People are getting hooked up with the memberships today. That is exactly what we love to see. 
Money, 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 money. Tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. I'll shout the people out, but the names are slow and I want to keep it moving here because times are limited. So if you got a membership check and make sure you thank Jesse NYJ Maddie with a super chat, Jake airports, limousines and party buses. Always bringing the content, safe travels on your way home. Any shot for the flight. If I had time to get a drink, I a hundred percent would be drinking right now, but it was, it was get live as quickly as possible, you know? So I'm drinking in spirit. I'll have a drink on the plane. Don't worry. All right. As I watch, as I figure out if I could stream a little Apple TV for Yankees Astros and keep up with the uh, Sweet 16. By the way, I'm on Sirius XM Bad Dog Radio tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So I land tonight, and I'm on the radio for four hours tomorrow. So we're talking all things sports, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Mad Dog Sports Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 82. Uh, Michael writes in with the Super Chats, it's a bad omen for McDonald. No, it's not a bad omen for McDonald. Let's think about it like this, Michael. Will McDonald now has less pressure on him. That They were in on Clowney. So they were always going to add another pass rusher. They were in on Shaq Barrett. If anything, this allows Will McDonald to not have to be a star right away. Like Everyone's like, well, what if he's Jermaine in year two? That would be awesome. What if he's not? Because Jermaine was a pro bowler. Do we know Will, uh, Will McDonald's a pro bowler? We don't know. I like his talent. But we don't know. So I think it's a good move from the standpoint that you bring in a guy that instantly could replace the production of of Huff and still allows Will McDonald now to play way more snaps. He's still going to play a lot. But he doesn't have the onus to be great right away. He's got to be better than whatever we saw last year, but he didn't play, so we don't know what he is. We saw flashes. Mike writes in with a super chat. Thank you, Mike. Imagine the trades that would happen if Jake traveled out of the country. It's always when he's out. It, it, Mike, it is truly amazing, man. It is truly amazing. I'm live for, you know, seven hours, day one of free agency. The Jets don't make their first move until midnight Eastern. You know, I'm like, it's just, I'm at a work conference two weeks ago. That's when the Morgan Mo- Moses trade happens. You know, I'm supposed to go see the Jonas Brothers at the Houston Rodeo. As I'm leaving to get in my car, boom, Tyron Smith signs. I could just, look, if the Jets win, it's all worth it. But man, can we get some deals done at a conventional hour, Joe D? A Friday news dump trade for, for Hassan Reddick? Come on, man. We'll take it, though, if they win. I don't care. Dark Knight Steve checks in. Safe travels home. Best of luck back in New York. I appreciate you, Steve. You're the man. All right, let's get to some more calls. Please make it quick so we can squeeze in as many as we can. Victory Monday is up next. What's up, Victory Monday? Hey, Jake. First time, long time. Really excited about the trade for Knoebel. Uh, I think he's going to be a great addition <laughs> to the team. Um, I'm wondering about the draft. I mean, do you think that we – pick up a few more pieces in the next few weeks, um, maybe O-line depth, safety, and then we just can really do whatever we want during the draft. 100%. Uh, I, I think safety is a position that they're waiting for the market to, to go down. I think some of the bigger names got to get signed for the Jets then to get involved. And I also think they could just bring back Ashton Davis too, who wants to play somewhere, but what if that doesn't really exist? Um, offensive line, I, I still want them to bring back McGovern. And if they're going to bring in a swing tackle, Donovan Smith's out there, Long Island guy. Uh, Bakhtiari is obviously the unknown if he could pass a physical. And then they have the draft as well. I think Bakhtiari is something that could happen post-draft, depending on what they do. So you know, the, the needs you bring up are, are legitimate needs. I just don't know if they need to solve all those needs until they see how the draft plays out first. Yeah, one last thing. I don't know if you had time. Do you see Nick Faria freaking out on Twitter over this? Oh, I loved it. That's how you know it's a good trade for the Jets. <laughs> yeah, I was excited. I was like, okay, good. This is good. All right, yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate you. I got a text deck. I saw that. I was trying to get this stream ready in my Uber, hot spotting my phone. So I, I, I did see a couple of his tweets, though. I got tagged at a few of them. Oh, man. Super Chat coming in here from Vinny. Best way to get your comment read is Super Chats. We just don't have time. I'm boarding a plane here in 30 minutes. Uh, Vinny says, it's amazing what can be done when you got a burning hot fireplace poker jab in your ass. Keep it going, JD. Yeah, how about that, man? Let's go. Let's go, Joe. Step up. <laughs> Big Bella says, what time is boarding? 535 Central. And I'm boarding Group A, so you best believe I'm getting my ass at the front of the Southwest line here. All right. Uh, more of your calls right now. Let's go to Rob, the Jet fan from Glenhead. Hello, Rob. Jake! We got him, baby! Here's Cheers. You, buddy. I'm doing this for both of us. I'll live through you, Rob. I love it. Tell Alan to go F himself. Every time that guy with his negativity First, he's saying, we're going to get that guy. Well, what was his name? Verse, that defensive uh, pass rusher. 
And he said, oh, we're going to run to the podium and pick him. Now, we get a guy like Reddick. This is a phenomenal move, Jake. And you know what? This guy's got a track record. His last four years, double-digit sacks. He just came off of two years ago, 16 sacks. He's only two years older than uh, Huff. I mean, this is a sensational move. I mean, I, I dare anyone to, to really say anything negative about this move. And, and then we got him, Jake. This guy is, is going to it's gonna be havoc with this guy. This guy's going to blow up crap all over the place. This is a sensational move. I, I did not expect this. I am really super-duper happy. What do you think, buddy? 100%. I mean, look. They, they gave up a pick that is three drafts from now. You want to say hello? Jets got Hassan Reddick. Great move. Absolutely tremendous. I mean, you talk about a guy that can rush the passer. That is Hassan Reddick. They know. They're not in their heads. They see it. They see it. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously. Look, the, the, the bottom line is this. If you were going to replace Bryce Huff, I don't know who you were getting that's better than Hassan Reddick. And you gave up a pick that's three drafts from now. Three. I, Joe Douglas is not here three drafts from now. What does he care? And at least he didn't trade away a one, right? Or he said, like, F it. Like, here, here you go, Raiders. Here's two ones for Devontae. I'm all in. Oh, like, he's still smart with this. It's an all-in move, but it's also a trade that doesn't cripple you, even if it ends up being uh, that second-round pick. So I love it. Boy Green's watching the show. He says, I'm so freaking fired up on doing pelvic thrusts in the Chick-fil-A drive through Dear God. Folks. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at this guy. I mean, Boy Green's doing what we like to call. Right, Ron? <laughs> uh, uh, M. Lopez writes in, extend JD's body of work and proves over time. They have to win, all right? I like Joe Douglas. He's obviously has not been perfect, but they have to now win. Can we see how the year plays out? We like these moves. I like the Dalvin Cook signing. I was wrong. It's on Joe D to know these things, right? So let's just see how the year plays out. But I'm not going to sit here and act like Douglas hasn't had a good offseason, right? If, I, if, if I'm going to destroy the man like I did for about a six-month period after this debacle of a 2023 season, I'm going to give him his props when he makes good moves. Like, the, the idea that we only judge Joe Douglas by his overall record is lazy. He screwed up quarterback. That's why the record sucks. He's built a phenomenal defense, a phenomenal special teams. He drafted some offensive playmakers. He signed some good players on that side of the ball. They have screwed up quarterback, and then Rodgers got hurt on play four. This is the year to fix it. Altoona writes in, make this show a three-hour extravaganza. That plane ain't going nowhere without Jake. I'll tell you what, if I get enough super chats and channel members, maybe, maybe I'll catch the next flight out of here. Just kidding. I got to be on the radio tomorrow. Can't do that. But I appreciate the support. Super chats, best way to get your comment read. Let's get back to a couple more calls here. Phil, up next. What's up, Phil? What's up, man? I'm back from the WWE uh, brawl that we had with the guy with the mask last week. <laughs> <laughs> I still wish Gator could make something out of that. That'd be hilarious. Uh, two things. I just want to say I'm almost certain that CJ Mosley slipped an Apple tag in your luggage so that every time you hit a flight, he's doing something. JD's dropping the big hammer on people. Um, and it's two, always happens, man. Anyone who's yeah, it's crazy. A long time knows that anytime I'm traveling, that's when the Jets. So it's it's, it's in your Ron hat, bro. Story. Something it's in the wrong hat. It's in the wrong <laughs> cap. It's the top Maybe. of the cap. Hey. But um, secondly, is uh, I, I'm looking to see what the deal is going to break out. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see what it's going to be uh, for the, the second year. But on top of it, I think Quandre Diggs, somebody's coming in at safety before the beginning of the year. And uh, he just keeps making moves. I, I'm telling you, I'm feeling that either it's coming back into the first he's trading in or he's going to grab us a second round pick trading it's going to happen for the draft well he's not I, done. I, I, I hope they trade back phil and they can get that second because then it sets them up nicely then then you're talking about just tremendous flexibility going forward and that's exciting that that's personally that's what i hope they do i hope they could trade down i would i would love to see that time to sing along folks it's time for another he-man call hopefully he no sleeping adios mio <laughs> all right here we go v-man hello v-man Ooh, Jay, how you doing? I'm great, B man. Why do you sound like you just woke up from a long nap? Oh, uh, I'm a bit under the weather right now. B man, you just got through COVID. We're sick again. Yeah. Can I try and wake you up? Uh, nah. This is how. All 
All right, B man, bring it. Yeah, no, honestly, I love this move. You know, it's like I said, you're replacing that you're replacing Bryce Huff with a much more he's a proven player. He's still, you know, he's still, you know, relative he's still, you know, under thirty. So that's good. You know. And you're not crippling and like I said, it's the draft is twenty twenty six, so it's not gonna bother you. A hundred percent. Look, I mean, it's, it's yeah, no. an all in move without really having to give up a lot to be that all in. I'll worry about the second round pick potentially in 2026 <laughs> uh, after the Jets hopefully win a, a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. That's all I care about. Yeah, no, I agree completely. And by the way, you glad to finally get away from the horrors of Houston pizza? Let me tell you something, V man. The first thing I'm going to do when I get to my New York City apartment is stuff my face in New York City pizza and then call you, okay? <laughs> It's That's the end of that V-Man call. Now he can go back to sleeping. <laughs> Literally, he's going to be going back to sleep in there, or he's under the weather. I love it. I love it. Comments, questions, super chats, please send them in. Ron's got a super chat for us. Best way to reach the show is the super chat, so we can try to get to as many comments and fans as possible. My man Jake picking up chicks at the airport. We're glad to be with you for the ride in Texas. Bring it home, buddy. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. I will not be picking up chicks, though, at the airport. I got a job to do, all right? I got a job to do. Carlos writes in with a super chat. That doesn't mean I didn't pick up any last night. My last night in Houston, though, I will add. Cha-ching. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, all right, more calls right here. Let's go to Tim from Fishland. What's up, Tim? Jake, great pickup. This man is not only a proven pass rusher, he's fourth in the last four years with 50 and a half sacks behind T.J. Watt. Miles Garrett, but he's even better against the run. Okay. And for what I want to say to all the Jet fans, stop with the Bowers crap. Okay. <laughs> it needs to stop. Okay. This is how you build a team through the trenches. The offensive line is what needs to happen in the first round. Okay. It's imperative depth, 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 depth. We have a all pro running back, a Hall of Fame quarterback. You have to be able to protect them, okay? So this this is a really, really, really good move. I I, I did not see this. This is better than Clowney, to be honest better, with you. Yeah, Tim, t- t- he's a better player than Clowney, 100%. All right, Faria, Faria is freaking out just like my buddy who's an Eagles fan at work. I called him. I'm like, guess who the Jets just got? Hassan Reddick. He goes, no! <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. This is Joe Douglas's motto this offseason. Please. Please, it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. <laughs> There's too much winning for the Jets, baby. Oh, I love it. David with a super chat. He writes in, hey, Jake, as soon as you're able to get some hen dog after the show, get two shots for the both of us. Let me tell you something. I don't know if Southwest has Henny on the flight, but if they do, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I appreciate you. Uh, let me get to a couple more calls. But we got a special guest on the line to give some quick takes before we get back to it. Ladies and gentlemen, our film expert, Andrew Fialco, is watching. He has called in. Hello, Andrew. I feel like every Friday recently, it's been like Fridays galore. We just can't stop making moves. Let's Um, go. Yeah, the Trump Trump clip was great, too. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, I tweeted about it. And I got people telling me we mis- it was a mistake that we let let Huff go. I'm on the wave that like Huff wanted to leave at this point. And then if we if we give Hassan Reddick like a long term deal, I think that's even more proof because th- like what, what's the what's the really like the reasoning behind letting Huff go if we're gonna give Reddick the same exact deal? I guess maybe that Reddick is more proven. Um, I, I I like the stats that guy just said. I was just going through his PFF quickly. And yeah, it's it's good stuff. I've loved Hassan Reddick. I think we mentioned that you might have mentioned like, hey, we might be able to get Reddick or Sweat, um, because the Eagles said that they would were willing to trade both of them. The picks a 2026 conditional third, and it's gonna be a third because you everyone knows how our pass rushers play. That it's a rotation. There's no chance he plays over 67 well, percent of snaps. He might get 10 sacks. It triggers I, if he gets I 10 sacks. I think it said, am I wrong? I thought it said he needs both. Let me read the Schefter tweet again. It's uh, the 2026 pick becomes a second if Red has 67.5% playtime the season and has 10. Okay, you're right. So it has to be both. Yep. So 
like we we know that how our how our um defensive line uh, is like sub big substitutes in and out. I don't know what it means for Will McDonald. Uh, obviously, that pick now looks a little odd, just because we could have had JSN, we could have had Jordan Addison, we could have had Zay Flowers. That just looks a little off to me. Uh, but I still hope that McDonald plays 30, 40% of the snaps. I literally was just watching film on him uh, this morning, and I was like getting excited about the prospect of him becoming uh, a, a big time player for us. So I don't know what it means for him. But the bottom line is, the Jets beat reporters were all saying, hey, like, don't expect the Jets to do much this offseason. Um, after we didn't do anything, hey, like, we're not going to be all in, uh, so don't expect much. And look what Joe has done. He's done exactly what he needs to do for this one-year window. We really need to view this as a one-year window. And then lucky if we get two, even luckier if we get three. Rogers, 39, coming off an Achilles tear. He's still top tier. I still love him. Still think he can play at a top 10 quarterback level in the NFL. And the defense we've built around him now and – how we're building out the skill groups. It's it's something that Jet fans should be really inspired by. 100%. And look, this guy's better against the run. This guy fits the win now timetable. And I, I'm not convinced he's going to get more money than Bryce up anyway. And also, I'll, I'll repeat it for those two. And again, when it comes to evaluating defensive linemen, I will take the Jets evaluation over almost any team in the league. They have a track record. They're well coached right. on that side of the ball. They know how to draft and develop. They know how to take guys who's no one no one's ever heard of and turn them into good players, a la Bryce Up, a la John Franklin Myers. Quinn right. Williams went from a good player to an all pro in this scheme. Like they know what they're doing there. So if they think that Reddick makes more sense than, you know, going down the path of giving Huff all that money, fine. And then let's see what McDonald turns out to be. But there's no doubt this defense is loaded. They're playing with more leads loaded. this year. Rodgers is back. This offense is going to be significantly better than historically awful. Even if they're just average, yeah. that's the difference in three more wins right there. So uh, what's not to like? I mean, I don't care about a pick three years from now. They, Joe Douglas might not be here then. Let's, let's try and win a Super Bowl before then. Right, and that's definitely his thought process. And like you said, the way we're team building now – it's the way that like all Dallas Cowboys fans have been begging their team to just be all in. It's literally what we're doing. We all one year deals, um, a bunch of veteran proven players. Yes, some have some track history of getting hurt, but what what's the point of not taking these chances? Douglas, Douglas knows that this is like a make or break year to make the playoffs, but I think our our expectations have to be a lot higher after all the moves he's made. And now, no more worries about the draft. No edge at ten. Uh, obviously, I, I've, I was watching one of your shows after I was on this week and you were worried about it. Uh, no worries about 10 being an edge rusher. It's obviously O-line or receiver. I, I don't think there's any other way to to shape it because those are still two positions that we kind of need to fill. We definitely need some depth at O-line. Could use depth at receiver so we don't have Alan Lazard be our wide receiver three or at this point, Xavier Gibson for this one-year window. Maybe he goes and trades up. Maybe he trades back. But at least we know now, basically, like, the defense is set. I think we'll sign a safety at some point. No rush for that, in my opinion. But linebackers are set. We love our linebacker core. I mean, I'm just thinking about, like, the D-line is so good. Like, Reddick's a real proven guy. Huff didn't play that as many snaps as him, but Reddick is really damn good. And opposite J.J. with Quinnen in the middle, and we know Sauce and D.J. on the outside with Michael Carter in the nickel. It's, like, almost sounds too good to be true. I feel like I'm running into my – my thoughts from last year where I was so ecstatic about the team because – and now how could we not be more ecstatic? Like it, it's we, the team building he's done in, in the free agency period has been awesome. Well said. Well said. Andrew, I appreciate you popping in, man. Great job. Safe flight. Appreciate you. Andrew Fialco, everybody. I got a couple other special guests I see on online here that you guys will know, so we'll get your takes on that. Please, if you're watching live right now, I just saw we got over 1,100 watching live. Do me a favor, smash that like button, and please, if you want bonus content, I have posted four shows on Patreon this week that aired before YouTube got them. Obviously, I've been moving the last couple of days here. I'm flying back in about 30 minutes, so I've been releasing shows early. Patreon.com slash Jake Asman Show. It's the easiest way to support me. And support for today's Jake Asman Show is presented by Huga House. Get the hat that Aaron Rodgers is always wearing at hugahouse.com, H-U-E-G-A house.com, promo code Asman at checkout, and you will get your vintage-inspired hat 15% off. You know, you guys always hear me talk about Rodgers and other Jets players who wear Huga House. Well, my favorite comedian right now, one of them is certainly the great Shane Gillis. And just the other day, I was scrolling on Instagram and look what Shane Gillis was wearing. The same hat that I'm always wearing that Rogers is always wearing. So if you want this hat and the other 
vintage inspired hats from Hugo House. Check it out on their website and use that promo code ASMIN for 15% off. Let's get to some more of your calls. The more special guests are going to join us. Let's squeeze in the king because we got to hear from the leader of this fan base. The man who brings the passion. King Lowski is up next. What's up, King? Jake, my brother. Jake, my brother. Boy, I don't want you to get kicked out that damn airport. But boy, J.D. cooking. He cooking. <laughs> oh, hey. This division of rap. Wrap the division up. It's over with. You can't name a team on paper, on the field, better than us. Nobody. It's over with. The A. Boy, we just put more nightmares in Josh Allen's head. Oh, it's a wrap. He think he he thought he thought he felt pressure last year. It's gonna be more pressure on him than he can ever feel. I'm telling you, this division is a wrap. We got the best quarterback in the division, the best defense. Hey, J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Let's go, baby. Yes, I love it, ladies and gentlemen. King Lowski. And if you want more Jets chance for King Lowski, we have it on loop, baby. Hit it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Never change, King Lowski. Also, uh, by popular demand, I've added this as a draw. Hey, Charles, I need some more of that chicken soup. Love it. Love it. Back to the calls we go. Let's go to a man who we know will be making sweet and passionate love tonight. Boy Green has called in. What's up, Paul? Woo-wee! Joe Douglas just slapped some soft sauce on that defense, <laughs> Jake! Woo-hoo-hoo! Oh, yeah! Oh, it feels good. Jake, I just got to tell you, come on, man. We were able to slap on uh, freaking Hassan Reddick for a 2045 conditional blee blah blue who gets a flying who about any of those picks baby it's about adding some juice and they just did that on defense man now we could trade up we could get spicy marvin harrison jr malik neighbors perhaps let's go right now oh boy green i love it man i love it i love it i mean this is it's a move that kind of it came out of nowhere from the standpoint of if, if they were going to land reddick it, you would thought you would have thought it would have cost more than the pick three down to you know. Oh, for sure, and we'll see. I don't know. I'm driving, just leaving a Chick Fil A parking lot or drive through that I did several pelvic thrusts in. But I will <laughs> tell you that uh, I saw Mike Garofolo said that maybe they're working on a long term deal. So I'll be curious to see potentially what that looks like. But shoot, if they give up the second in 2045. When I'm dead, I don't care. That means that he had 10-plus sacks and played 70% of the snaps. So, shoot, <laughs> works for me. Take it, baby. I don't care. Yes. I love it. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Paul, you're the man. Thanks for calling in. And here's a message uh, from our quarterback on your future plan. Hey, congrats, congrats on the sacks. Ladies and gentlemen, the great boy Green. Let me catch up on some Super Chats here that I got another, another special guest that's called in to give some takes on the Jets landing all-pro edge rusher Hassan Reddick for a conditional third-round pick in 2026. Even saying that out loud just feels like an absolute steal. Great job by Joe Douglas this offseason. No other way to put it. Uh, let's see. This one came in from C. He's got a super chat for us. He says, Jake, with the new special teams rules, more important than ever to re-sign Justin Hardy and AD. Also, great day. No defensive end at 10. They weren't taking a defensive end at 10 anyway, but now you can put that to rest. Thank God. Now, as far as Hardy goes, yes, I'd like him back. He obviously has not had a market that he thought was going to was gonna be there. I mean, he's had some tweets about it. Maybe they could still bring him back. I'm not sure. Special teams is definitely more important now than it was with the new kickoff rules. I agree. As someone who actually has seen the kickoff rules that the NFL is going with in person multiple times, because I've seen the Houston Roughnecks play in the XFL in person, special teams is more important now. I'm telling you. So I, I agree with that. Carlos with a super chat. I found your program during an airport chat during COVID. Screwed up my previous chat. I found your program during an airport chat during COVID. I think I got the gist of what you're trying to say. You found my show during COVID when I was live at the airport. 
I appreciate it. I've done these airport shows many times. I'm a veteran at this, all right? First time we broadcasted next to a Buffalo Wild Wings, but, you know, maybe it was meant to be. Where's Sauce Gardner at? Send me some sauce, Sauce. Dan writes in. He's using his super chat of the month for being a channel member for seven months. Awesome. Mets are terrible, Jake. Can't wait for football season. Good trade for the Jets. Need to keep the second round picked up. The Mets are terrible. They played one game. Now, I don't think they're going to be very good this year, but they played one game, man. <laughs> NY Jet Situation Report Super Chats us. You called this, Jake. Manifested Reddick. Gutty, I'll miss you, man. It was good to meet you in person uh, last week. I, I didn't call it. I can't take credit for this. I, I, I simply talked about Reddick the other day as an option. You know, him or Sweat, one of the pass rushers from the Eagles. But I appreciate it. I thought it would make sense. There's no doubt. I'm glad they got it done. I did not think they'd be able to get it done for this 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 little. I want to read this comment from Double before we bring out a special guest on the line. Asmanian Devil, the irony of you doing a Jets podcast while in the airport. It really is ironic. You're not wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now is a man who has come on this show many times, typically after brutal Jet losses. But today he joins us after a great moment in Jet history. Will Parkinson joins the show what's up will pa what's up man how are we doing not uh you know second second time of uh i just finished up two emergency pods with uh with the great joe caparoso and the citizens of the football universe um and uh you know i feel like i should call in you know quite a few people uh you know in the in the uh, this i mean in the uh, in the show including boy green hip thrusting in a chick-fil-a parking lot I mean, does it get anything better than Boy Green making sweet and passionate love to his fiance? Will does anything get better than that? No, and uh, far more, uh, far less, far less buzz than I was during the Tyron Smith uh, <laughs> post uh, post show. But that was a good time. We had a good time with that. What do you think, man? I mean, Hassan Reddick it seemingly came out of nowhere for the compensation. So I'm just going to qualify this. Like, if you're you're allowed to be upset with how they got to the point they're at with Reddick in terms of losing Huff, not getting value for him, the way his contract shook out. You know, it's really two for 11 over the next two years. Um, you know, all these things are fair. Um, you know, the fact that the Eagles signed Huff and are, you know, replacing Reddick essentially, that's all fair. So I'm just going to qualify that now. He's an incredible player. He's one of the, what, eight or nine best edge rushers in the league. The Jets got a lot better today, and that's all that really matters. I don't care yep. about the 2026 third round pick. He ends up being awesome for them. It's a second. Damn, like that sucks, but like hopefully you're really good. And if he's not good for the Jets, oh man, we get up a third round pick in uh you know in three years. Like this regime's not gonna be here. So um Reddick's awesome. The tape's exceptional. The text that I've gotten from a lot of people in that, uh, a lot of players and and things like that, whether it was with the Jets around the league, are like, wow, it's a insane move um and if you're gonna be all in be all in we've talked about that a million times and this is being all in this is we go on to go win a title this player is going to help us tremendously go win a title so i, I think if you're anything but excited again you can be disappointed with how they had to get here to have to trade for a redic right like that's fair but if you're not excited about the player um I just posted his last 27 sacks. <laughs> it's a nine minute video. So go have fun with that. And the numbers over the last couple of years, he's fourth in the NFL in sacks over the last four years. Um, 29 years old for a pass rusher is not old, like at all. Um, so be excited. About the player. Jets too, Will. Like, yeah, just know they're going to play. Keep them fresh. They rotate. I, exactly. Well, have you noticed this too, right? The Jets have been decimated with injuries on offense. Defensively, yeah. they've been remarkably healthy the last couple of years, and people don't maybe don't love the way they rotate guys. But maybe that's why they've been so healthy because guys are fresh and they're not going out there getting fatigued. And when you're fatigued, you're more susceptible to injuries. Maybe that has a lot to do with the fact that the Jets have been very healthy on that side of the ball under Robert Sala. Yeah, and he's going to get one on ones all day long. Uh, play next to Quinn and gets everybody paid. Everybody plays better. So, um, uh, like I said, like he's an awesome player. It's an awesome move in terms of the compensation. I'm sure the extension will be something in the, you know, two added years on to this deal. So it's really, you know, it takes him 20, you know, age 30, 29, 30, 31, or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but I don't know. It's just like, see a lot of people complaining on Twitter. Uh, man, I, I, I implore you to actually watch us on Reddick. Um, and if you're upset about the draft pick, that's a, I don't know what to tell you. The only thing people could be upset about, and rightfully so, is, hey, man, like we could have just kept off. We wouldn't have had to give up compensation and pay more money. 
But at the same time, like that's the end of it's it's over now. And unfortunately, the Jets they made their bed with Bryce Hoff, and it's it's unfortunate it didn't work. But I'm not sure they could have pivoted to a better player this offseason at the ice position. Like Reddick's awesome. Like if you just like I, I I'm serious when I say this. Like anyone not excited about it, I implore you to like go back and really watch. You know Reddick since 2020, right? Twelve and a half sacks. 11 sacks, 16 sacks, fourth in defensive player of the year and an all pro, 11 sacks in a pro bowl a year ago. It's awesome. We the best pass rusher in the division, no? 100%. 100%. I mean, the other best one, probably Quinn Williams. So, like, do they not have the best defensive line in, in the division? Maybe I think the best defense in the division. You could make a case. Been, the last two years, they're the best EPA for play defense in the league. But that's just. And that's before they get to play with the lead. Literally. So this furthers my agenda, man. Go up and get that one of those three receivers and just go all in and say, F it. We are going to try to win the title in the next two years. And we don't care what happens after it. Go, go for it. You, go get, go all, get Maserati Marv, uh, Maserati Marv at five. And uh, you have you have demon time. Uh, start getting the rings fitted. Well, do you hear that? Is that boy green making love? No, that's Joe Douglas music. <laughs> Shout out to Will for joining us. Great appearance. Follow the Turn on the Jets podcast. He's also part of the Badlands Patreon. I love it, man. Will wants them to trade up. Look, I, I'm not against it. If you tell me they're getting Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm not. That's like the one guy. Him or Neighbors. I think Neighbors is a star, too. Oh, man, crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, I got like 10 minutes left, and then it's boarding time, baby. Back to New York. Today's my final day in Houston. So, of course, Joe Douglas had to make a trade. As I was in my Uber to the airport, Paolo writes in, not only is Reddick too quick to be blocked, but he has great defensive adjustments on short pass routes. Let's go. Hashtag Joe Douglas killed it, baby. There's too much winning please, going on. Please. It's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. <laughs> Jettergy writes in, Yankees win, Jets making moves. Welcome back to New York City. Let me tell you something. Seeing Juan Soto's throw as I'm sitting in right field, a seed and a great play by Trevino in person yesterday to stick it to the Astros, who I despise was tremendous. Great final full day in Houston for me yesterday. I'll say that much. All right. A couple more calls here. Be quick. I can't get to everyone. I think you know why. I'm at an airport. Find me the Jet content creator that's live from a Buffalo Wild Wings at the Houston airport. All right. Let's go to Dre. He's up next. What's up, Dre? What's up, Jake? My guy. Welcome back to New York. Uh, I too am in the city, so, you know, just give me a call on the cell phone. I'll go pick you up right at the airport. Just say the word, and I'll be out there. Listen. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to Connor. I think it was Connor Rogers' appearance during your, when you were at the combine and he talked about, listen, JD has to do all of these moves, but JD is still going to do things his way. And this is, this is a JD move all the way. It's great, great, fla- great player for really great value. It's like, wait, how did he get like it? At this point, I'm starting to think that he's a like mafia, you know, kind of guy because he's getting mafia style deals. It's a while they we've got J- got Reddick for like practically nothing and just the signature on the thing. And it's like all these like, you know, they, the other GMs probably beat up, roughed up a little bit. I don't even know. But at this point, I'm, I I have a hard time thinking that JD trades back since he's never done it. I think he's going to be just as aggressive in the in the draft at this point. I think he I, I'm I'm excited. I'm not trying to put too much out there. You know, I don't want the Jason to hear me, but I would not be surprised if JD moves up from ten and gets one of these one of the three receivers, and then we just all in, baby. So I, I can't I wait trade. to get home, safe <laughs> flight, all that. I appreciate it, man. Look, it, it, I think they could move up. I also think they can move down, and that's perfectly okay, too. I think that's what's exciting about this draft. They have options. All right? Like, hey, if, if they if they trade up, though, oh, my God, is it going to be crazy? Crazy. Rat Diddy writes in, you hear that? Rat Diddy, the only thing I am hearing is somewhere in Florham Park, there's a man. Who's dancing like this after stealing Hassan Reddick away from the Philadelphia Eagles? (laughs) 
Look at that body. JD doing his thing. Speaking of bodies, Jeremy Jets Chaos up next. What's up, Jeremy? The love of my life, D Brick. He's Brick, Coach Brick is gonna have another weapon. <laughs> we are a much better football team today than we were yesterday. I'm pretty stoked. I agree. I would agree. <laughs> um, super, super exciting, man. It's like I I just can't believe it. I'm just blown away by it. I did not see this coming at all. It, it, it seemingly came out of nowhere. Once they lost Cloudy, it's like, all right, probably Yannick Ngakwe, probably one of the other like lesser known free agent edges that were available. And they'll piece it together and you got to put your faith in the coaching staff to get a player of this caliber for a pick three years from now. I, I, I think it's, it's a home run move. It's an insane thing. This team, I mean, before a couple of years ago, we, you remember that when we got Carl Lawson, we were jumping up and down that we finally had an edge. I mean, I just can't believe this. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> we're just stacked, completely stacked. I love it, man. Jeremy, you're the man. Thanks for calling in. I'll tell Obrick you love him when I see him. All right. All, all right, bro. <laughs> all right. Let, rapid fire through a couple more. Dano's up next. What's up, Dano? Hey, what's up, man? Friggin' pumped. Um, I don't think I've heard it anywhere else, but. Like, if you think about our our additions in the last two weeks, Kinlaw, Reddick, Mike Williams, Tyron Smith, I haven't heard anyone notice, but, like, they're all former first-rounders, and it's disgusting. I love it. Um, you think about our D-line alone, like, six guys on our D-line, former first-round picks. Fucking bring it, man. We got this. They're well coached too, Dano. I mean, that's the thing, right? I mean, these guys are well coached on that side of the ball. They have arguably the best defensive line coach in the league, and Aaron White Cotton, who they retained. And there was some doubt if they were going to be able to retain him at the beginning of the offseason. That was an under the radar move. M. Lopez says, We welcome a little bit of quietness, he said. The only quietness we're seeing is this. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. That's what's happening for this fan base right now. I love it. Uh, great move, man. Remember Joe Douglas was sleeping? That was the joke. He was pulling a V-Man. Not anymore. Johnny, up next. What's up, Johnny? What's up, Jake? Hey, man, at this point, I think I got a ditto on what everybody has said because they've taken all the points. We got better today as a football team. At this point, at pick 10, I think we need to go ahead and get Nassau Community College's best offensive left tackle, Obi-Juan Knobel. Appreciate <laughs> the fight, bro. Welcome back. I appreciate it, man. For those who missed our show when we talked about the uh, the silly Colleen Wolf bullshit and about Woody and Sala, the uh, the birth of the Jets' new prospect they got a draft, according to Lane Kerner, Knobel. All right, could play both sides of the ball. Just a, a no brainer at ten if he's somehow there. More of your calls right now. Henry is up next. What's up, Henry? What's up, man? Underrated thing that we uh, we're forgetting is a. Uh... Hassan Reddick's going to be able to help out uh, Jermaine Johnson, you know, improve like his pass rushing, like off his speed off the edge. So even bigger things from him as well as just over well-roundedness from Will McDonald. Uh, the question I want to have, a lot of people want to trade down, but you got to think who's, who's coming up for what, you know, four quarterbacks go in the top four, top five, whatever, you know, who's, who's worth trading up for. There's a, a world where the bears don't go a Dunze at nine. If a Dunze is at 10, are you taking them or are you using that as the trade bait to trade down? It depends how far I'm going down and what I'm getting. I'd be inclined to just take Roma Dunes if he's there at 10. No, nowhere further than the teens, obviously. So, obviously, you don't trade down unless you're staying in the teens, in my opinion. 100%. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, if someone's going to give you, like, a two and a one next year, then maybe you, you think about it. But, I, I mean, a Dunes at 10, and you don't have to trade anything to move up to get a one of the big three receivers and just go all in, and then maybe you add some depth to your offensive line in the third and fourth round, fine. Let's Let's, let's go. Real quick, if, if we take if and in this theory, if we take a Dunze at ten, are you using uh, the third or you know both of our four to go into the second for offensive line? Or is that all in and you really risking that? I'd I'd be willing to trade future draft capital besides next year's one to get back in a round two if that's what they wanted to do. I would I would do that. Yes, I like it. Appreciate you, Henry. Good call, man. All right, let me get to a couple more. Let's go to Ryan King, my man. What's up, Ryan? Ryan's moving company. Is uh, was a huge help in all this. More details on that when I actually move in next week. But what's up, Brian? How did this morning go, by the way? Man, it was great. Your your uh, your guys did exactly what needed to be done. 
Awesome, awesome. Uh, quick question. I just literally walked in from work, so I don't know all the details. Is, what's left on this guy's contract? Is it a one, two? One, one year, $14 million. Okay, so what's left on the salary cap right now? Where are we well, at? They have, they, have to, they, they have to extend him and work it out. They also could create more cap space with restructures. I, th- I think I saw the Jets had about $9 million in cap space right now. Okay, gotcha. You know my thoughts on the cap, though, Ryan. It could always be manipulated. Oh, yeah, absolutely, 1 million percent. But, I mean, th- this – when I saw it, I was excited. I was like, this is where we need to be. But I still – you know, unless they – I feel unless the Jets go in the first round for a wide receiver, um, they still need to, to, to bring one in. Agreed. So. Agreed. And I think I think that's something that probably could be solidified in the draft as well. They could double up. One, so one can- more veteran, one more free uh, – one more draft pick. Can you see them moving up? Because Jody has been extremely aggressive and he hasn't been stupid, can you see them moving up to get Marvin Harrison Jr. and then moving back into the second round for maybe a pick this year and a pick next year to grab O-line? I don't think they would do both, right? I think they would just stay at with their – I mean, we assume they didn't have to give up their third-round pick. I think they would just stay with their pick in round three, Ryan. But maybe, I mean, look, if they're going to trade up, I would have to imagine they would have to give up one of their forts, their two next year for sure. And honestly, I'm still not convinced you could trade up without trading away next year's first round pick. I'm personally not convinced you'd be able to do it. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Maybe two more calls here. Let's go to Doug on the couch. What's up, Doug? Remember that doofus who called 30 minutes into free agency and said Joe Douglas was failing and wasn't doing anything. Yeah, it's amazing how every time the Jets make good moves, JJ is nowhere to be found. What a doofus. Uh, but I hope you have a safe flight. Um, I've been team trade up for that was my tinfoil hat here. I'm team trade up. I say F them picks. Go get Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors, whichever one you the Jets prefer. Go get them. Make this a great offense. They've been showing you they're going all in. Continue going all in. Pull the Rams. F them picks. Go all in for it. All right. Doug? Maybe Joe Douglas is ready to just uh, lay it all on the line. I love it. Uh, by the way, for those asking about the details about Ryan's moving company, I will have all that next week. So I will be able to share that for those going through moves. I have all the details for you guys next week. I got time for one more call. Ricky, close this out. What's up, Ricky? What's happening, Jake? Now showing at a theater near you. Jake's on a plane. That can only mean one thing. JD is cooking like Gorman's chicken soup, baby. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Cue that JD music. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. I love it, Ricky. I love it. I love it. I want to thank everyone who took time to watch the show. Do me a huge favor. Hit the like button. It's the least you can do for giving you a live show from a Buffalo Wild Wings at an airport. Say hello. Yes, she does not want to be on camera. Anyway, I appreciate everyone who tuned in. Uh, Thanks for watching. Like button, subscribe. That goes a long way. Support our sponsors. Become an Asmaniac. We added 20 new Asmaniacs during the show. Whole bunch of super chats as well, so I am appreciative. I board my plane in five minutes, so I'll talk to you guys soon. It's been a wild final day in Houston for me. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And one more time on the way out of here. Uh, Joe Douglas, you hear that? I do. It's his music. Here we go. (laughs) 